Before we've experienced the joy of total stubbiness here, I'm a little embarrassed by something I didn't do at the end of the last video, and I bet at least one person out there called me on it. Because any time in a lab production network doesn't matter, when you're starting to inject a default route into the table like we did with the stub area, and some more specific entries are gone, you need to ping those destinations that you were reaching with the explicit routes. And in this case, it was the routes to 6, 7, 8, and 9, those loopbacks up on router 1, that we took out of the routing table because they were external routes. And a stub area will take those out, replace them with a default route. We saw that, but I just wanted to show you that during our little break here, we did ping. And now we are ready to go forward with our total stub area, which is an even easier configuration than the stub area was. We just need to add one little hyphenated word to one of our routers. We don't have to add them to both. What you need here is the area border router for this particular area, the stub area. And for us, that's going to be router three. And an ABR, I'm gonna go into more detail on an ABR and a couple of other router types you should know about uh, actually in the very next video before we get to default information originate. But again, we're going to go ahead and just set that on our ABR. And that is router three, which actually borders three different areas. You can see that we've got it borders area zero and three and 34. Router four, of course, is not gonna be an ABR because it only borders one area. So let's go ahead and bring our equipment back up. And I believe, while we're, before we do that, let's run show IP OSPF. And a couple things that you'll see down here as far as these areas go, because now we're getting more of them and more of them. And we've got our backbone area here. I ran show IP OSPF was this particular command. And also when a router is an ABR, you're gonna see it right here. It'll actually say it is an area border router. And if we go down, we'll see some extra information about not just the backbone area, but some info about area three. The SPF algorithm has been executed quite often since we've been making some changes. And also notice down here, it is a stub area. Okay, so that's another way to verify that you're in a stub area. And again, that command is show IP OSPF. If we go over to four and run that, we do not see anything about, hey, your border router, the, inf the readout's a little bit different, but here we don't see anything about it being an ABR. Here's the area 34 information down at the bottom, and again, you can see it is a stub area. So show IP OSPF is the command to run here. So what we wanna do is add this word to the ABR. So we're going over to three, and we're adding it to what you ask. We're adding it to the area 34 stub sum command, and we are adding no summary, which is literally the only thing that we can add here. Now, when I enter this, it's not going to tear the adjacency down, at least I hope not after I said that, because this is not changing the setting of that stub bit. Both routers three and four have that set to on, like yes, area 34 is a stub. It doesn't matter which kind of stub it is, just that it is a stub area. So let me hit enter and you can see that we don't see anything there. No changes, the adjacency doesn't seem to be down. Let's do show IP OSPF neighbor first, just to be sure. And we can see that it didn't go down, didn't have to be rebuilt, didn't see any messages. And now let's take a look at the routing table. Wow. <laughs> That's a pretty good deal. Uh, all of our routes are gone now, except for the one that's actually local, that O route to Lubeck 33, which is in area 34 between routers three and four. Every other route, the external ones, the inter-area ones, they're all gone from the table and they've been replaced with that single default route. So in this uh, case, by making this a total stub area, we knocked the routing table down 90%, right? There were like 11 entries in it, something like that. Now we have two. But of course, we need to be able to still ping everything. We pinged the four external routes, but let's ping those other loopbacks. Still have connectivity? Yep. And let's ping something on 172.1.2. You know I'm going to ping all three of them because that's the way I am. And it's the way you should be too. It's just a good app to get into. So really, we've been able to ping everything, every route that was gone. We'll go ahead and ping 172.12.34.3 just for fun. And there we go. 
But again, isn't it amazing? I mean, look at that. Look how far we shrunk that table down by making this a total stub area, which again is going to take the inter area routes and the external routes out and represent them with one single default route. Pretty darn good deal. Now, I know that you are sitting there looking at this and going, hey, this is a great idea. Well, what if we built some stuff, um, you know, behind router two? You know, what if we added router five down there and all of a sudden router two just had one next hop and, you know, etc. Can we put router two in, you know, a stub area? Well, let's just go ahead and try that. Let's go over to air router two. And basically, I guess I'm asking you, can you make area zero a stub area? Don't even think about it. <laughs> you can't do it. Uh, the router's not even going to let you do it as soon as you put an area zero stub, which we did right there. It's going to tell you, hey, backbone can't be configured as a stub area. I don't know what you want me to do for you. So it was a nice idea. We could shrink all the routing tables down, but there are operational reasons with the different LSA types and that kind of thing where we can't, if we made somehow, if we were allowed to make area zero a stub area, then routing in non-backbone areas would actually be affected. So that's why that rule exists. You cannot make the backbone into a stub area. So coming up next, we're gonna talk about that ABR again, and I'm gonna introduce you to another new term, ASBR, that we have one in our network right now. I'll show you which one it is and why, and we'll talk about some other general OSPF router types. And after that, we'll tackle default information originate so you can compare that to this, and all of that is coming up next.